Hello again. You know, I had so much fun reviewing the handheld battleship. Now I wanted to uh, do another review of something very, very similar. Who remembers Tiger Electronics? I imagine some of you of a certain age are going to get a shiver down your spine, or maybe a wave of nostalgia. Who knows? So I want to bring, show you one that's uh, from when I was a kid. Ta-da! Disney's Darkwing Duck. Because yes, it is fully licensed. Run, shoot, pick up. Yes. So this is from 1990. Uh, Tiger was very, very popular in the 90s as they were trying to compete with the Nintendo, Sega, Atari to a certain extent, all trying to get that handheld market. And Tiger's plan was, hey, let's find out exactly what the kids like and then target it and make th and license everything. So movies, live action and animated, cartoons, shows, live action, animated, whatever. I know it's, I just said cartoons, but whatever, you get my, what I mean. Other video games, because yes, they even licensed things from Sega, Nintendo, Capcom, you name it, comic books. There was a license for everything. Like, I remember there was one for, uh, for Sonic, there was ones for Mega Man, Full House, yes, really. Uh, my friend had one for X-Men, where you were Cyclops shooting at Apocalypse, and it was not a good one. But uh, this is an example, I think, of a good one. But they made tons and tons of these of varying quality. Uh, this is a, as I said, from 1990, so it's a very standard, basic unit, very square. Not much on the back. It takes two double A's to run this beast. Some copyright information there, also stating it's 1990. Remnants of my name, because I wrote on it, because I took it on a trip once, because I'm an idiot, and a giant speaker, because this thing is loud. And if you don't know what these things are, it's a very basic LCD screen, image printed on the back, with character, little blobby characters for most of them. Uh, Darkwing himself is going to be mostly stationary in the, in the center, but you'll see that in a moment. And I can run the gigantic button here that I think all that does is move his feet faster. I don't think it has any impact on the actual game. Shoot and bomb, which you'll see later, and pick up. And, uh, you know, we'll just get right into it. And a uh, warning, it is kind of loud, but we'll bear with it because it actually... I'm going to give you the full experience. So there is Darkwing. And there's me running. Don't actually think it does anything. So this is broken up into three rounds. Don't remember Darkwing having two guns, but hey, creative license, I suppose. And he hit the launch pad. Yes, I do remember the character names. But yeah, so you see LCD character. But they do, as I said, this is actually an example of one of the good ones, where you can actually make out what everything is supposed to be. Like, that's clearly Darkwing, that's clearly Launchpad. I wasted a bomb there. And of course, anytime they hit Launchpad or me, I get hit, and I kind of spaz out and lose the opportunity to get points. Also, once you pick up a bomb, there is no way to save bombs. So, like, your next attack is going to have to be a bomb. But you do get points for picking them up. And just above Quacker Jack there is, I believe, the countdown for when the round ends. And each round, a new villain is introduced. So... You know, there is some progression to it. Oh, look, he's in jail. But yeah. Imagine having this in the back of your car. As uh, your kids play it. Or if you were my age, you were the kid playing it, annoying your parents. Or my dumb self, where I took on a 
a trip once on a bus for school. Needless to say, I had the sound turned off. There's Megavolt there. He actually shows up in two different spots. So he can actually attack me directly. Well, let's get them both at the same time. Oh, no. Oh, yes! I was going to say I missed my chance, but no! Got them both. Hey, you showed up at the wrong time there, Megavolt. And again, I do got to give credit where credit's due. It actually looks exactly like he's supposed to. You know, the actual... I can't call them sprites, but we'll say sprites for the heck of it. You know, they look like they're supposed to do... The illusion of them running around in the background is, is pretty good. So not bad as far as these things go. Not great. But we'll get onto that in, in a moment. Let's just run for local flavor. And again, showing your progression. All right, round three. And I forgot, Goslin shows up. <laughs> but yeah, now they introduce Bushroot, who can only be attacked via bomb, and he tries to steal your bomb, because he is below where I can actually attack. So the only way to get him is to throw a bomb. Come on, Watchfly, give me a bomb. Don't make me a liar and not show Bushroot. There he is. Oh, he stole the bomb before I can get to it. Oh yeah, Megavolt can attack Goslin. I forgot about that. I gotta say, there is some satisfaction getting all three at once. Ah, you went away too fast. Oh, come on, I hit him first. Yeah, I forgot Goslin ends up being here. It's like, a, I guess, a damage sponge or something. At least we got two in a row. Yeah, as like I said, the only way to actually attach, attack Butchroot is with the bomb. I do like the cape flapping animation, that's a nice touch. boy so yes <laughs> it's a full game and as i said this is actually one of the better ones all the ones that were ba all of these were basically a uh, score high score things because that's all you could really could do this sort of thing and i do want to show you a size comparison because you know this is supposed to be a handheld portable device but it's kind of big it's not going to fit in your pocket whereas this a good old friend well still kind of large is going to fit in your pocket very easily, I would say. And it's much, much smaller, much more compact. Ooh, no, don't want to turn the on. But again, it's still kind of big, but not nearly as big as this beast. No, no. That, in fact, I can't even fit it on, on screen. Yeah. There's like no comparison. If you've never seen one of these before, these things are massive and take six AA batteries. And they eat them like crazy. Anyway, <laughs> although saying that, this is a modern one. And while it's a little bit slimmer, a bit longer. Still not really going to fit in your pocket. 
So how in the world was something like this and all the other things going to compete with the original Game Boy? Let's just focus on the Game Boy. Cartridge-based system. And it was price, where these things were relatively cheap. Sort of. These were about, as far as I can research, about 20 bucks a pop. That's a bit much for something like this. Now granted, the actual Game Boy, you know, let's let's do some rounding here. Let's say the Game Boy itself was about, uh, let's say $75. And a game can range from 50 to about $39, $40. So yes, the Game Boy is much more expensive, so this is cheaper by comparison. But this is literal minutes of fun, whereas, you know, even if you just get the Game Boy by itself, it com- the game it comes with Tetris, you're going to get much more, much, much, much more fun and enjoyment out of that and much more replayability, whereas this can be played basically the same way over and over and over again, offering almost no replayability. And if you want to go something like, hey, even though I like Darkwing Duck, I also like DuckTales. I like Tailspin. I like all the Disney things. What about, uh, oh, I don't know, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Sonic, Donkey Kong, Maybe even Full House. Why not? It starts adding up very quickly. And overall, you play it once and it's shoved in a drawer for months on end, and on end or years. So, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I do sort of like this one. It's a good example of them. But uh, probably for collectors only. If you like old electronic things or just a specific character. In this sense, it's Darkwing Duck. But it will stand by. I do like this thing. Holds a little nostalgic place in my heart. And it's one of the better examples of Tiger. But uh, speaking of Tiger, you may be wondering what in the world happened to them because they were a big presence in the 90s, making tons and tons of these things. Well, they made the Furby. Yes, really. Tiger Electronics made Furby. Yet another reason to hate them. But um, I thought they went out of business quite honestly, because they sort of disappeared after the 90s. But in fact, they were absorbed by Hasbro and still sort of operate pseudo as a tiger under Hasbro. So they're still in business, technically, which is which blew my mind. But anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you for watching. Take care.